have to go to dig in the weed in there. That's cell 11, that's where, uh, This is my family living here now. It's, we have five generations here today. Uh, my grandfather was three years old when he moved here. My mom was born here. My mom's nine other brothers and sisters were born here in the same house that my grandmother lives today. Uh, we were, mama married, my dad moved here with her. They raised their five kids here. I'm raising my two, and, and my two kids are raising their kids here. Nobody leaves Grand Bois. Everybody stays here. The Grand Bois is a low-key, uh, small community that didn't need anything from anybody. We always lived off, you know, our own selves. We didn't ask anybody to come dig our ditches, uh, cut our grass on the side of the roads. We were self-sufficient. Yeah. And uh, he could pull in 80 hours sometimes the, at the shipyard, and his catfish money was more than that. Yeah. So he, we did pretty good on the fishing. But uh, that all came to an end and once we realized that Campbell Wells uh, was bringing in hazardous material. It was a scary thing to be responsible for poisoning someone else. In uh, March of 94, uh, um, 81 truckloads of waste came through from Alabama. And we kind of figured something wasn't right. They, they told us it was going to be a saltwater pits. And in uh, March of 94, they brought in hazardous material. And uh, but the whole community was aware that uh, it probably wasn't just salt water they were bringing into our community. A lot of the kids got sick, adults got sick. Well, mostly everybody here in Grenoble got sick. They all had uh, uh, severe sinus problems. Uh, they had uh, uh, they were coming out with rashes, unexplainable. Uh, kids with asthma, their asthma was was even worse. Uh, people were throwing up. Their their noses were bleeding. Uh, they had diarrhea. They um, all this was over uh, you know a short period of time and. And people were just you know, just talking back and forth, moms, you know, talking about their kids being sick, and we realized that you know it wasn't just a coincidence that something was happening here. So um, we uh, started protesting. Anything that has anything to do with all field waste, they are allowed to dump it in there. So nobody knows what's going in. They don't test what's going in there. They get this stuff, it got anything to do with that off field waste. And just like what come from uh, Alabama, they said they had airplane fuel, they had all kind of different things in, in this waste. Nobody knows what's in this waste. If you mix two things together, what it makes. If you mix 50 things together, what it makes. They're not testing for that. They don't care. They are allowed to lie to the people and call it not hazardous. They ain't got no law in my mind that can make a lie the truth. This is how this waste. Go lie to somebody else. You know what I mean? Senators, representatives would tell us we were trying to strangle the oil and gas industry. That's not exactly what we were doing. We were just trying to live our simple little life like we've always lived in Grand Bois. Just you know, give us our bayous, our, our, our woods, and our clean air. That's all we asked for. And they, wouldn't want, they didn't want to help us. How they? How could they do this? You know what? You know what? Common sense. Who could you sit down at the table with common sense and say, "This is the right thing to do with hazardous waste." You know, just call it non-hazardous. Put it in big, big pits in the marsh. Put it in the marsh and let it air out. You know what I mean? There's no. I don't see how anybody in this right mind could allow this to go on. This is just money talking. Money talking. Six down. Six months down the road. They were still accepting waste. Uh, they was accepting a million barrels of waste a year. You got over 7,000 vehicles that pass straight through the middle of a hazardous waste site. Called non-hazardous. Yeah, yeah, called non-hazardous. You got 7,000 vehicles that pass through here in a day, you know, in 24 hour period. How many other people are getting this, this hazardous waste? We were being poisoned. We still are. <clears throat> yeah, still going on today with that coming in.
and we just we just have to keep fighting and hopefully one day we can say this was all worth it that they can bring our Grand Bois back to its natural state as we knew it as when me and Danny were growing up here swimming in the bayous eating the catfish from the bayous uh, swimming right off the dock at U.S. Liquids before there was a U.S. Liquid so Campbell Wells It's just a, you know, it's just crazy situation. The more you dig in it, you know, you know, the worse it is. But we're gonna stick together. <laughs>